think there's a lot being done with, with technology to try to educate kids. You know, maybe we're going to create these experiential programs of, 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 of exciting moments in history, you know, the Civil War or something, and, or the moon landing or these interesting things. But I think for some kids, um, it's as hard to imagine a college campus mm. as it would be to imagine going to the moon. Right, right, <laughs> Actually, right. Actually, um, that what it was the moon is like a little more familiar right. in a way to me. I'd seen pictures of the moon on the, in the encyclopedia set that we had at home, but I think those images were completely foreign to me, mm. actually, in, in a way that, um, yeah, I, I think maybe that's the, the power of, of technology is, is to, to help people with historical events or faraway things, but I think sometimes it's, it's easy to forget if you come from an urban or an upper, upper middle class environment, some of the things that are very obvious to you are gonna be very foreign to mm. someone who mm. is either poor or rural uh, just physically isolated from these things and being geographically isolated from universities is a huge predictor. Right. When they do studies of kids in the US, if you're a very high achieving student but a very poor student, so that two, two things, really smart but really poor, what, uh, what, are the, what are the factors that determine whether or not you're gonna make it into a, into a decent university? And geography plays an enormous mm. role. Mm. Uh, it's, it's actually one of the greatest predictors of whether or not you'll make it into a university. And that's, I think, because isolation, uh, it, it cramps what people are able to imagine as possible. Right, right. And that right. seems like something that technology could actually help with. Technology does a lot of really unhelpful things, but that seems like it could be yeah. one, one thing it could do well. David, you sort of give us a sense, an overall sense of sort of where, where are we at in penetration right. of these technologies at this point? Right, so I, I'll answer that, but let me also just say, to build on what Tara just said, I mean, I think the internet is, I mean, the internet arguably could be the most important technological innovation in the history of the world. Mm. Um, and, but there's a cruel irony around the internet. As much as you can use the internet for, and as Terry says, there are bad things, as many good things as you can use the internet for, it should be a huge equalizer, a leveling of the playing field. And yet, because of what's called the digital divide, the chunk of our country that does not have access to the internet, for geography, for income, for upbringing, um, for a whole host of reasons versus the part of our population that does have access to the internet. The cruel irony of the internet, this great equalizer, is that it's actually exacerbating differences and exacerbating inequality in the country. A lot. So that's the, Not a little, I think that's a lot. the frame. Right, right, right. So the numbers are, are pretty clear. We had about 7%, about 93% of America is wired for broadband. So you have about 7% of the country that doesn't have the internet because the internet hasn't been built out to their homes, it's not available. Um, but the, to me, the shocking statistic is, and there are all sorts of studies around on this, and they all have different numbers to them, but somewhere between three and four times as many people don't have access to the internet, even though the internet has been built out to their homes. Mm. So overall in the country, you're talking about between 25 and 30% of Americans do not, are not hooked up to the internet at home. Mm. 